There's parliamentary groups, uh, Nobel Prize winners have all chimed in on this issue. Free the Cuban Five. I mean, that's the so obvious and so evident. And um, so far, deaf ears. And uh, I would urge all of you to make your views known, not just to the consulate here in Vancouver, which I think is important, but also to President Obama and uh, to Judge Leonard on, on the Ray, Rene Gonzalez. I'm really concerned about his future if he is paroled to Miami. Yes. Since there's been more tourists um, allowed or, or I'm going to Cuba, what kind of changes have you seen? You mean American tourists? No, tourists in general. Oh, okay. uh, well, oh over the last 10 yeah. years or whatever. Well, tourism, I think, Repeat really... The uh, uh, what changes have I seen as a result of tourism becoming important in, in the Cuban economy? Uh, tourism really didn't enter as a major factor in the Cuban economy until the late 80s and really the 90s. And I think still the largest group of tourists that go there are Canadians, with uh, West Europeans being second. Well, tourism is a mixed blessing, I think, in most countries, and especially in poor countries, because um, it creates uh, a different class of people, people who are now getting hard currency in tips. And it creates exactly what the Cuban Revolution was against, servility. Um, that's the bad side. The good side is people get to see Cuba and Cubans get to meet foreigners uh, and it generates revenue. Not as much revenue as it could if Cubans would begin to develop the agriculture that fell off after the Soviet Union went away. And that is of course one of the programs now that the Cuban government is pushing very strongly to get people back to the land so they can grow their own food um, and make more money on tourists so they don't have to import the food. But in, in general, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword uh, in almost all third world countries. Well, for investment, uh, it's a plan to be a complement of the economy. So that means that uh, most of the, the counterparts in Cuba is the Cuban government, the Ministry of Tourism, the Cuban tour operators, and they are uh, part of the hotel run by administrate uh, by the foreigners. But uh, uh, as an investment, as a joint venture, joint venture does not change the ideology. But I agree with Saul that uh, the fact that the, uh, there is um, uh, difference in the revenues of some of the people working at the tourist industry, the industry it creates uh, differentiation in the in the population. The people related to the industry, tourist industry, is uh, having more revenues, but. Uh, Ideologically, it's not uh, the, 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 the fact that the foreign investment is coming in the industry is not uh, changing the ideology. It's, uh, it is, seen, it is see, uh, seen as a complement of the economy and we need it. Really, uh, in the world economic situation, the foreign investment is needed to uh, achieve a level of uh, industry to compete with all the other destinations, you see. There is investment in other countries in the Caribbean, so we should keep our industry, uh, industry competitive to receive the, the tourists. I guess I, I wasn't clear. I wanted to know if it had shifted the ideology from people who, countries and governments that are hostile to Cuba. Has it softened at that? Oh, well, yeah, I misunderstood the, 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 the question. Well, I think the, being a tourist in a country will not change your ideology, but uh, will get you closer to the everyday life of those people and will uh, allow people to understand more what is happening in my country, for example. And we have a lot of friends from Canada traveling to Cuba, 
as a tourist and they go two, three, four, ten, fifteen times and they uh, know now, uh, they, they want now to know more about the Cuban people and to be mixed not only at the resorts but to go to the cities and to meet people and that, I think this is a positive uh, result uh, uh, from the, coming from the tourism, no? And uh, Canadian tourism is very highly appreciated because that, no? There are people here, I met people in, for example, in Montreal, a couple that they have been in Cuba 80 times <laughs> in 12 years. So they are half Cubans now, <laughs> in, in a way. And uh, they get used to Cuba, they have friends, they have family there. I think the meaning is not changing the ideology, but to get closer as, as two people, no? Well, I think uh, we still have very good relations. And there is a base for the relation and tourism is a very important part of that. The most the tourists go there, the best relation we have. And uh, we have a very, very good economic relation, trade relation, investment. We, we manage both countries to keep that. And I think the, the government, no matter if it is a, a more right-oriented uh, uh, government, recognize the importance of the bilateral relation. We both keep it in good care. Oh. If I understood, it's because uh, the obsessive policy from the United States, because Fidel was there, and I don't think so because we stand in the same uh, position that we we should be an independent country and we should uh, we we have the right to decide our own internal uh, yeah. policy, you know. So I don't think a difference uh, in the projection of uh, there is a slight difference because Obama, as Saul said. Uh, uh, um, decides a flexibilization of the visits to Cuba, Cuban Americans and some groups of U.S. citizens, religious groups and some other. But I don't see major change if uh, Fidel is not there and Raul is there. And uh, if in the future, uh, a government of Cuba is standing in the same position of uh, uh, um, uh, defending our sovereignty will if the United States does not change the attitude towards Cuba, recognizing the independence and sovereignty of Cuba, there will be problems. As a matter of fact, because uh, uh, before the revolution, uh, you know it's not a new story. We had uh, uh, one or more than 100 years of referendum with the United States, no? being closest neighbors. I would add, uh, I think this is my own opinion, that uh, Fidel Castro should have written three chapters in Machiavelli's The Prince. <laughs> One chapter would have been how to deal with your enemies. You export them to your larger enemy <laughs> and change the destiny of that enemy. Imagine if we had had eight years under President Al Gore. Second, as he exported his enemies, he somehow managed to obsess them. And therefore, they couldn't think clearly. All they can think about is killing it. Um, thirdly, when the Cuban economy got into real trouble, he figured out how to get money from his worst enemies. It, in, in terms of remittances, a billion dollars poured into the Cuban treasury. Um, so, how should I say it? Fidel Castro deserves a place in the Guinness Book of Records for disobedience. And... Uh, as long as disobedience, even if he is gone, prevails, the United States is going to feel, I don't know, it sort of oozes out of the, out of the paint in the uh, Oval Office and in the National Security Council uh, buildings and into the heads of the new occupants of those places <coughs> that you can't allow disobedience in this hemisphere, albeit disobedience has spread widely, as you can all see. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, now that 70% of the Cuban population is living in urban areas, uh, what does the Cuban government uh, think or plan to do to entice people to return to the land? May I? Well, for uh, a year now, because this is a core uh, question no? for the Cuban economy to, to be productive in agriculture. And uh, we found out some time ago that uh, almost 50% of the land, productive land, was unproductive. So for a year or so now, the government is giving um, pieces of land to people requesting that piece of land yeah, uh, uh, to um, cultivate the only, uh, um, let's say, uh, um, requisite, no? Or requisite, how do you say? Yeah, what they need. What they need is to put the land into, into uh, to be productive. In nine months, they were given about around 300,000 new uh, pieces of land to the people. So, uh, create incentive for the youngsters is to allow them to have more revenue. And as a matter of fact, it's working now, not at the pace uh, I think the government was expecting, but the trend is there, and we hope that will. Uh, help a lot in solving the problems and the efficiency problems in the economy, in the, in the agricultural sector.